Hey everyone, Molly here. Welcome to your practice today. So this is a, a, just a few minute video uh, about the topic of ritual and perhaps putting together an altar as you are getting used to or continuing perhaps your self-practice at home. So when you go to a temple or a yoga studio, um, I'm sure that you usually see there's a, a little corner typically with some symbol of a god or goddess and of course the gods and goddesses in yoga are really representative of, of energies and characteristics that we are seeking to embody as we understand better the wisdom of those characteristics. Um, usually there's incense, maybe a candle, some water, some crystals, all sorts of beautiful things and whether um, you recognized it or not there is also usually some deep connection within us like oh how beautiful or oh that is represents some kind of beauty or even if beauty isn't the word that comes to us we understand that there's some sort of meaning behind it and sometimes maybe there isn't sometimes maybe it's decoration but oftentimes really there is a meaning behind it and so in the practice of, of yoga um, we have a lot of symbolism and what the symbolism lends itself to are a lot of rituals. So one thing that we know for sure about life is everything is always changing. And so the beauty of having symbols and rituals is they become like little checkpoints for us either every day or every few days or maybe even every few hours. Um, perhaps that's what we're experiencing right now as we seem to have a little bit more time on our hands or we're not changing locations, we're not so stimulated by external output. And just by the way, um, please just exit off of social media and receiving content for at least a few hours a day um, really super important for your heart, for your mind, for your body, for your well-being. The news will be there when you reconnect. So what I'd like to, to encourage you to do as you are hopefully starting to enjoy this ritual of having a daily practice at home is to create a little space somewhere where you are, whether it's your own home, whether it's a friend's home. Um, for me, it happens to be someone else's home or a hotel. And what you can do to create an altar is look through your belongings and maybe you already have like the little makings of an altar, but you look through your belongings and you find some items that represent something that's really meaningful to you. What we want to try to do is not have it be necessarily like the memory of a breakup or um, the exact memory of an actual event but to the best of your ability as you're looking through your things to find the things that represent either a feeling or something that you've learned that resonated so deeply with you. For example, one of the things that I have on my altar is a beaded hummingbird that I got on leading a retreat in Guatemala. And while there were an, an incredible amount of beautiful things in Guatemala, there were also some really challenging things on this retreat. And so this hummingbird is a really strong symbol for me of this idea of transformation, of how to take each piece of information and rather than react to it, bumping up against so many things in life, to really receive it and, and sort of figure out, okay, is this, does this feel good? Does this resonate? Is this right for me? And if it's not, how do I then interact with it? How do I put it back out into the world as something else? Or how do I just usher it back out into the world maybe without interacting with it at all? So I divert. Um, but anyway, you can choose a, a few items. And again, I encourage you to, to find those items that really carry with it uh, uh, sort of a bigger picture type of wisdom. And these elements start to become representative of those things that each time we step on the mat, we're working to embody, we're working to discover the truth of these things. And eventually, if they really are wisdom, of course, we do discover them because the wisdoms are the things that stay, even as everything else around them change. 
in addition to these few items, and listen, if you're in a situation like me, um, I, I have one item from my normal altar that I carry. It's a, a stone from my beloved. I always have it in my pocket. Um, but I'm going out every day now and collecting feathers and finding beautiful things on um, this beautiful land that I'm getting to connect with now. And I'm putting those on my altar as representative of some of the things that I'm working on in, in my spiritual practice. So always an option, too, to just say, you know what, all of these keepsakes, just forget it. I don't want anything to do with it anymore. And see if there isn't something else that you can deliver to the altar as representative of something that you would like to embody. The other really nice thing to have on an altar, in addition to any other creative way that you would like to do it, is a candle. And a candle is really beautiful. In the Hatha Yoga tradition, we light a candle before each practice to honor our teachers. And that is in part because obviously our teachers help facilitate our discovery of understanding of life, of our path, of many things. But also the teacher, he or she, has also traveled a similar path to one, the one that we are traveling together. And so this candle is a reminder to us that not only do we honor the people that are really facilitating our discovery of wisdom in life, but also honoring that they too had to walk through the brush <laughs> to get to where they are, to understand how to deliver understanding how to facilitate it for other people. So it's a really beautiful kind of honoring. And the other beautiful reason to have a candle on your altar is because when we light the candle, we're also kind of representing it. And you can actually have two different candles or three different candles, so one for your teacher and one for what we call tapas. And in Hatha Yoga, right in the eight limbs of Hatha Yoga, where well, the first two limbs kind of describe how can we interact with life to give ourselves the best possible way to connect with the depths of the practice and essentially the depths of life. And one of those is, and now I see I have a friend behind me, um, one of those, tapas, is like really this deep burning desire to keep going, to keep on your path of discovery. We often relate it sometimes to spadhyaya, which is self-study, and I just like to say that word, but tapas here is like the fire in your belly that is getting you out of bed every morning right now and getting you to your mat or getting you to your phone so that you can dance a little bit and have that be your daily ritual to move and to breathe and to re-coordinate your efforts. So lighting the candle to really light the fire also of tapas, that we're dedicating ourselves every day a little bit to create some scaffolding for our spiritual practice or some scaffolding for our daily practice. And so why the altar is nice, why this ritual is really nice is part of the reason that also the ritual of just coming to the mat is nice. But sometimes it's nice to come to the mat and just move. And most of you out there who know my teaching know that I really love to bring the philosophy of yoga, the considerations of yoga into my asana practices. But on the off chance, sometimes we just need to come to the mat and move and breathe and that's it. Having an altar nearby carries with us or gives us, keeps us close to these sort of deeper intentions, these deeper ideas that we're working with to embody, to enrich ourselves and, and to help us and guide us along the path of yoga. So as we have a little extra time maybe these days, um, maybe you're finding wonderful ways to fill your days, but it's a really beautiful opportunity also to bring some newness into something that maybe is a little more familiar. So if you haven't ever put together an altar, I really encourage you to do. Of course, if you need any guidance or you're wondering, is this right or this wrong? I mean, there's no right or wrong in yoga, so you're okay there. But of course, you can always reach out to me emailing or sending me a message, and I'm happy to help. But really... Um, really encouraging you to put together a little something in some special corner that houses, that, that helps you to hold some of those deeper intentions. And then, of course, let that also be added inspiration to make it to your mat 
every day, to make it to your feet, to put on your favorite song and dance every single day. Because what we are certain about is that everything is always changing. And having these little rituals helps to create a little scaffolding, a little gentle, loving push in the right direction for us. Even when we wake up and we feel scatter-minded or we don't even want to get out of bed, you glance over and you say, oh, okay, that's right. Mm, There's the wisdom. There's the motivation. Okay, here I go. Five minutes on my mat. So thank you so much for... Um, joining me for this little discourse about altars, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful practice today.